Welcome back to another edition of the Bobcast. We begin today with football for the final time this season. The football team ended its season on Saturday with a loss in the NCAA playoffs, the second round to Johns Hopkins, 58-27. Frostburg State ends its season at 10-1 as the undefeated NJAC champions here in 2018. And Coach, uh, in the course of the season every week, uh, it's that same message, get better every day and win one football game a week. But, you know, it's Monday after the season has ended. I know it's quick for this turnaround, but kind of zooming out on, on the season as a whole, what did you make of this 2018 football season? Andy, is this my last Bobcast of the year? Yes, it is. This is it for me, 2018. How about that? I'm going to get 15 minutes of my life back each Monday morning that I haven't had in 14, 15 weeks. Congratulations. Thank you. Th thank you all for releasing me. Good time served. We're, we're going to miss you. It, it's on to swimming, indoor track and field, men's and women's basketball from here on out. That's exciting. Oh, exciting yeah. Exciting sports. Oh, yeah. And, uh, well, let, let's get to, to your season first and foremost. Uh, 2018, what do you make of it? Yeah, um, it, it, it'll, ta it'll take me so, some time to get over Saturday. Um, but, but when you sit and recap, what, what, I, what we have to do and what I have to do going forward is we have to focus on the 10 wins and not the one loss and, um, of this 2018 season. Overall, um, extremely pleased. Um, I, I thought we had a conference contender coming into the season and I thought we had young men that that played hard and, and did the right things on and off the field um that did I did I think we were going 10 and 0 probably not um but but I never looked that far ahead so you only look to the next game and it, you like to poke at it a little bit but the, the key to life and the key to football is to get a little better each day let's get one or two percent better each day that we wake up you turn around look at the end of the year and you're, you're pretty darn good in life and in football and that's what the young men did. We focused on the next game, and we were able to go out and take care of business in the next game. And there were a lot of practices. We got 1% and 2% better. And then we went out, and we were successful that Saturday. Um, the, the 2018 recap, um, undefeated regular season. Hey, we, we, we had a perfect regular season by, by a football team that wasn't perfect. Not perfect players and not perfect coaches and and not not a perfect university. So for to go undefeated and be perfect in a regular season is pretty special. Um, win the conference championship in our four years in the NJAC conference. There's only been once or twice that that there was an outright champion. Most of the time, it, it's one, two, three teams tied for first place. You know, because you beat each other up over the season. A team loses a game here, and another team loses a game there, and you're all tied at the end. Um, but but to to be the undisputed and, and be the conference champions is a big deal um, for for our football team and and for our juniors and seniors. Third straight postseason, never been done in school history. Never been to three straight postseasons. We've been to three straight postseasons. That's special. It's special to do that anywhere. Because complacency and 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 ju just you know th thinking that you have arrived and not working hard catches up with humans. For, uh, for our guys to keep working hard and for us to make three straight postseasons, really really special. And then we won a postseason game three straight years. So not only did we get there, but when we got there, we won. And, and you know we won a postseason game three years ago, and won two last year, and won one this year. Um, and, and in recapping the um, recapping the 2018 season, you know overall we're pleased. We're we're pleased. Now we need to be pleased about 15 minutes and then move forward. The games that stand out are, in, at least in the regular season, Wesley, Montclair, and, and Salisbury. Uh, especially Wesley and, and Salisbury where Frostburg came back multiple times in, in the final quarter of those games and your football team won some games despite some adversity. Uh, what's your reaction to this group and, and how it handled some of those big moments in, in crisis this season? Yeah, our, our, our resiliency, our persistence, our stick to is, is unmatched. Um, had, hadn't beaten Wesley in 13 years, hadn't beaten him at Wesley in about 25 years. To go do that in front of a ruckus, packed crowd at that place, um, that I, I'll, I'll never be, never lo love Bobcat Nation and love our alumni and our parents and our fans, but I'll never forget I looked in their pans, their, their home stands were completely packed. And then I looked over and we had as many or more people on the visitor's side as Wesley had on their side. And it just a really, really special moment to go there and win. And, and yeah, come back several times. We were down 14 nothing in that game. Ended up winning 35-14. Came back several times. And I think we were down twice in the fourth quarter. Yep. 
and, and come back to win there. Um, yeah, special, special. Montclair State. Montclair State was so much better than everybody thought they were this year. And, and, and to play, to go up there with a completely New Jersey officiating crew. And I know you're not supposed to talk bad about the officials, but wow. Hey, you, you're, playing the, uh, you're playing a coach. And, and Rick Giancola, who's won 240 some games, the all time active, he's the yep. activist winning coach in Division Three football, at his place in Montclair, New Jersey, with all New Jersey officiating crew, and the way our kids fought and fought through everything in that game and were able to be successful, yeah, great, great, another great moment. And then that Salisbury thing was special. The uh, the the last game of the year that, and I'm going to miss that rivalry game. I've said that before, but um, the. Uh, how, how tightly contested can you be the way we were the last four years? One-point game, four-point game, seven-point game, three-point game. Um, a, a, as good as a as good a rivalry as I've ever been a part of. But in that second half, there were three or four times when our young men should have withered and went away. We, we should have went away and, and just accepted that we weren't going to be successful that day, and they would not do it. Our players would not do it, and they kept playing well and kept making the right play and, and just kept playing hard until we were successful in overtime. Two straight overtime wins against them. It's a big deal. We, we, got, here as, we got here as a staff. We got here as a staff, and they hadn't beaten them in 10 years. And you figure when our seniors got here, they hadn't beaten them in 12 years. And now we've beaten Salisbury three straight. Yeah, the, those, those three games are special, Andy. I want to hit this senior class. Uh, 12 impact players who have been really the winningest group in Frostburg State football history. Uh, go right ahead. Uh, R R Riley Hartman, um, and i never forget my recruiting story, and I won't get into it, but a special recruiting story with Riley. Riley could have went a lot of places and done a lot of things. High academic, smart young man. Um, and we were very, very lucky that he chose to come play football for us. But uh, Riley started uh, 45 straight games, so he started more games than any player in Frostburg State history. And then Riley won more games than any player in Frostburg State history, 37 wins. Uh, you figure each year you, your schedule comes out and you count, you got 10 games. So you figure you maximum 40 opportunities, right? And they won 37 out of his 40 opportunities. And I know I'm counting the postseason games in there. Um, but but special, special player, special human being. Um, we're we're going to miss him around here. Uh, Dra Draquan Reed and, and Draquan Red shirted a year because he developed a, a blood clot in the off season, um, but and he he was able to successfully manage that and, and come back. Um, Draquan, a special special player for us and two time All Conference player. Going to miss him at middle linebacker. Uh, Bokum Vital's gotten little to no credit in his four years here. Um, Bokum, Bokum was one of the last players that we took on the roster four years ago. So we're allowed 125 players. He was number 123, 124. Guys, that, that, that last player you let into camp usually doesn't make it. Usually doesn't make it. And all Bokum did was make the travel squad his first year here as a freshman and then play the next three years. But but a um, a reserve the first year and then and then a player the last three years gets elected team captain as a senior, um, special young man, Anthony Taylor comes in and 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 d didn't didn't th Anth didn't think Anthony didn't think Anthony would, would would become the player and the person that he's become. Um, took us about a year and a half to get him to show up on time for things. He thinks the nine o'clock meeting starts at nine fifteen, and the, you know the three o'clock class starts at three thirty. And um, but but Anthony has has changed so much for the better, and he went from a young man that that I didn't think would play here or, or, or survive here, w with our with our emphasis on punctuality and accountability. I thought it'd be hard for him. He ends up being an all conference player. Had a great junior season for us last year, and had an even better senior season for us this year. Going to miss Anthony. Jo Joey Powell. Joey Powell is one of my favorites. Um, Joey Powell's family is one of my favorites. Um, great, great people. And, and the, the, um, the, the, there's a lot of, lot of memories with Joey, but, but here, here is this one. And, and uh, undersized all four years he was here, and all he did was outplay people. He outpracticed people. His techniques better than the players he was playing against for all those years. And, and he, he went from an undersized incoming offensive lineman to an all-conference offensive lineman as a senior. Joey's a three-year starter, so he's a starter on all three of those postseason all three of those postseason teams. Um, yeah, spe special kid. Miss him 
O'Shane McCall. Uh, O'Shane's my favorite, and he knows it. And, and I, I'm yeah, I don't I don't lie to people like like parents lie to their kids all the time and say I have no favorites. I absolutely have favorites, and and it's this: the kids that show up and show up on time and work hard while they're here, and, and they go to class and they stay out of trouble. The young men that enjoy playing football the most usually become my favorites because of how much I enjoy football. Um, two different times, three different times here with with O'Shane, I made demands on O'Shane. Uh, weight room demands and 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 weight weight body weight demands that I knew that he was not going to make that I knew he would not make and that he would either quit or I would dismiss him from the team not only did he make those weight room demands that we demanded of him not only did he do it but but he at one one off season he lost 30 some pounds and got stronger in every single lift in the weight room which was a testament to how much he wanted it. It's also a testament to how good our weight room is and Kyle Linhart down there. Um, but yeah, and and not not only not only did he do that, but he's three year starter at center. He started all all those postseason teams. Um, O'Shane enjoys playing football more than um, more than maybe any of the other kids on, on in our football program. O'Shane might enjoy playing football more than any kid I've ever coached. Um, he's going to miss playing football, and I'm going to miss coaching him. So, great player. Vincent Fields, wide receiver for us. Four-year player, did a nice job. Vincent's a team guy. Um, very, very, very respectful, uh, well-mannered. He, his parents did a nice job raising him. Um, Vincent is, is one of the smarter players on our team, um, but both in common sense and in team in his GPA. Um, it, Vincent's going to go off in life and be very, very successful. But Vincent did a lot of things for us for over four years. Sergio Andino is one of the best receivers in the conference the last two years. Did a real nice job for us. I think Sergio will be the first to tell you he, he, he won three, four, five games in four years of high school football. And, and to come here and win 37 games in his four years here, he, he'd probably tell you that was his biggest accomplishment. Um, when Sergio was healthy here, he was very, very good. And, and we'll, miss, we'll miss a healthy Sergio running around for us. Jamal Morant's a warrior. Um, J Jamal Morant took a beating at the position he played for the last couple of years. Um, Jamal come to us as a transfer out of Bowie State and didn't know what to expect when we got him. Um, but my best story was, was this one. And he come into camp, Jamal's sophomore year, his first year here with us. We had 11 tailbacks. And Jamal was sixth or seventh on the depth chart out of 11. And I started to see some frustration creep into him. And I just pulled him aside one day and said, you need to understand that the position you play. You can go from six to one in about a week. I said, you need to keep working hard, keep learning the plays, keep working yourself into shape. Um, I said, and things are going to work out for you. Well, he started the third game of the season for us that year. And has been our leading rusher the last three years. And once he started the third game of the season, he has never looked back. Um, but we would not be where we we would not be where we currently are without Jamal. Um, I, I'll miss him a lot. I'll miss our conversations. My, my, my favorite Jamal memory is this, and, and talk about, you know, big-time players making big-time plays and big-time games. We're down to Christopher Newport in the fourth quarter, and we've got a third and forever, third and 46, third and 54, and it, we, we have waved the white flag. We're going to call a really, really safe play, and we're going to punt, and we're probably going to lose the football game because we're going to need a huge defensive stop and then have to go down the field in one minute and score to, to win. But we threw the screen pass to Jamal, and he went 54 yards on the, It might have been third and 54. And, and, and people think I'm exaggerating. No, it was that far. We had had a couple personal fouls um, and some unsportsmanlike conducts, and, and, and we were in a bad way. And we threw a screen pass to Jamal, and he went 54 yards, and he broke like six or seven tackles and, and got us a first down. We went on to score. We went down and scored and won the football game. But that that will always be my favorite Jamal Morant play. Uh, Gre Grayson Boyce. Um, guys, Grayson Boyce is our team uh, MVP. Grayson's only been with us two years, transferred in here out of Towson State, um, which great move for us, and I think ended up being a good move for him going forward. Um, he is our team MVP for, for this, this reason and this reason only. Grayson's probably the second, third, fourth best tailback in the conference. Grayson's the best tight end in the conference. Grayson's probably also the first, second, third best fullback in the conference. Um, H-back, slot wide receiver, Grayson could do it all. Um, completely unselfish over the last two years, the two years he was with us. Anything our coaching staff ever asked of Grayson, Grayson jumped in and did. Um, and, and our best blocking tight end, 
th this fall when he could have very easily been playing tailback and led the conference in rushing. Um, but he did what was best for the football program. And uh, the reason that we're undefeated regular season, the reason we make the postseason is young men like Grace and Boyce and the fact that they'll sacrifice their individual good for the good of the team. Um, yeah, yeah, I, I will really, really miss him. I, 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 I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to miss the blonde, stringy hair, and I'm going to miss him making fun of me not having any hair. Um, but but ho ho hopefully we'll stay in touch. And, uh, yeah, one of my favorites now. Um, Grayson Boyce is the type of young man that everybody hopes their daughter marries. So that is probably the best compliment I can pay him. Um, great kid. Would, wouldn't trade it for the world. Um, Noah Teeter. Noah Teeter, four-year player here, and and Noah, this is this is a good one. Noah was our leading freshman tackler in 2015. He led all the freshmen on our team in tackles in 2015. Reason being was this: um, he was on all the special teams, so he ran down, made four or five tackles on kickoff, four or five tackles on punt, ended up with ten tackles at the end of the season. We laughed because he's an offensive player, never took a snap on defense, but he led the freshmen in tackles. Um, Noah's a two and a half year starter at tight end here for us and did a great job for us. And, um, yeah, and Noah likes football and Noah likes football. So our coaching staff likes Noah and Noah showed up every day and worked really, really hard. I don't ever recall. I don't ever recall a day when he didn't show up and work hard and improved. Noah showed up here, six, three, 179, 185, scrawny, skinny kid and worked himself into 225, 229 in the weight room and eating and and, and just filled out and become a man and, and a good player, good football player for us, all-conference player for us this year. Yeah, um, we, we'll miss having him around. Recruiting story on Noah. First year here, and I don't know what's going on and probably wouldn't do this again, but uh, uh, dumb luck as they have it. I had heard through the grapevine that there was a, that there was a player at um, – at, at Hancock High School or Clear Springs High School or something. And the player I had heard about's name was not Noah Teeter. Okay. But but I one Friday night and we all go off and watch high school games on Friday night before our games. And somebody said, where are you going? I said, I'm going to go down and watch Clear Spring and Hancock. And the person I was talking to said, you're wasting your time. One high school's got 200 students and one's got 100 students. They said, there's no way they have a player down there. I was like, well, I'll find out when I get there. And, and and I go and it's it's small town. It is small town football, but the atmosphere was really really good and the weather was great. So I'm sitting there watching the opening play of the game. Hancock's fullback goes 75, 80 yards to the house, and then he finishes the game with 100 and some yards rushing, playing fullback as a blocking back because they had a pretty good tailback. Um, and then I'm watching. He flips over on defense. And he's playing middle linebacker for him, and he has 20 some tackles. And I went, "Ho, oh, the best player in this game is not the person that people told me about." It's that kid right there. So we started a recruiting process there. And then later on, I went and watched a basketball game, him play high school basketball, and he had 20 and 20. So and I, now I pick on him a lot because if he'd hit like one or two of the rebounds, if he'd hit the putbacks, if he was able to actually make a layup, he'd have had 20 and 40. But he was the best athlete on the floor and could run and jump, and we recruited Noah into here. And um, and Noah has done a great job. You know, we don't win 37 games over the last four years without him. We'll miss him. Miss him, miss his family being around. Daniel Izagu transferred in here out of Maryland this year. Um, and he, he had been at Maryland and had some things happen and wasn't playing there and ends up here playing for us as a senior. Um, and, and Daniel fought through injuries all fall, did some good things for us. But the, the highlight would be this. Uh, we looked up at the end of the game, and, and Daniel Izagu has got eight tackles against Wesley. And I said, well, the SID at Wesley made a mistake because he didn't make that many tackles. And then you get home that night and get to watch him film, and Daniel made every single special team tackle against Wesley that day. We don't beat Wesley without him. Um, it, it, it is just extremely hard to make eight tackles from any position, to make eight tackles on special teams in one game. That's, that's, that's a whole season on special teams in one game. But he did a great job for us that day and, and happy to have Daniel this year. Did I leave anybody out? Uh, you've got everyone on my list except QB1. How about I left Connor off the list? How about that? Forgot about Connor. Mm -hmm. Might have done that on purpose. Might have. Yeah. Hey, best quarterback in school history. So maybe the best competitor in, in, in school history. Um, lo love the kid to death. Go go going to miss him. Um, going to miss him. Um, going to miss his father yelling at me from the stands. 
um it's got, yeah I'll, I'll, there'll be an absence in my life next fall because big rob won't be up there yelling at me after every single offensive play um connor came in here to us four years ago and we knew our coaching staff knew that we were a quarterback away from being good and what we thought well, we were a quarterback away from being five and five six and four seven and three because once you've been four and six that first year it's what we were trying to get to and connor come in here and completely changed the rhetoric he changed the narrative of our university and of our football program just on the fact that this on Saturdays he's not interested in losing. And I've heard him say it more than once at, on, during a game. I'm not losing this. We're not going to lose today. And then he'd go out and win. Um, but, but he holds every single school record. He, he, holds the, um, he, holds the, he holds the touchdowns in a career, touchdowns in a season, maybe twice now. Um, he holds all-time passing yards, um, all-time completions. And the special thing is, is he holds all that without having the attempts record. He, he didn't attempt to throw the ball over his four years. We didn't call as many pass plays as has been called here in the past. So he did all that on less attempts. Connor was a team guy. We run the football, and he understood that we, we were setting up things by running the football. And, and he, yeah, and he was great. Uh, with, with that stuff and I, I got all kinds of great Connor moments from him and I fussing with each other on the sidelines the last four years to to you know him putting together game winning drives game winning drive at Christopher Newport game winning drive at Wesley game several game winning drives at at, at at Salisbury against Salisbury he did it a bunch against a bunch of good football programs um I knew that we had caught lightning in a bottle when we went and played St. John's Fisher in a bowl game three years ago, and St. John's Fisher was five points higher than us at just how he he um, picked them apart, annihilated their defense. So, but yeah, a, a special special kid, special player. Um, I I don't know what else you say about him other than the best one. Yeah, he he is the best to ever do it at this university. Um, ha happy to have him. Um, really appreciative of him and the, the other seniors really appreciative of all of them and, and going to miss coaching them going forward. Um, I, I, I feel like I, I have, didn't say enough about Connor, but I, I got so many stories. They all kind of run together. Um, I, I would tell, I'll tell you this one. I like the recruiting stories. I like where it started. Um, Connor was not that highly interested in Frostburg and Connor's mom was born and raised here and she's a McFarland and all that. And myself and the offensive coordinator at that time heard through the grapevine that Connor and his dad might be driving through town, that they might be coming down the interstate through town. So we got cell phone numbers, and we begged them to stop. We begged them to get off the interstate and stop, and they nothing else. Come, come see your aunt and your grandparents and all that. And we used every trick in the book to get them off the interstate because he was going somewhere else to play. And we managed to get them to agree to stop by for an hour and a half, two hours, and we rolled out the red carpet literally. So did, did everything we could do to get him here and, and, and wine and dine him and, and all that and explained to him that he was going to be the man going forward and we were a quarterback away from being good and et cetera, et cetera. And I'll always remember his father when he got to the door at the end of the, at the, end of the recruiting trip, his father stopped and said, I want to tell you all thank you because you've been the most open with us. You've been the most open. You've been the most honest. Um, you've been the most welcoming of any school that we've been to on any recruiting visit. And then two and a half, three days later, Connor calls and commits to come playing for us. And, hey, it was the start of something special. The most accomplished quarterback in Frostburg State history by a mile. Uh, I do want to touch on how the culture of Frostburg football was propelled this year by the seniors and the team as a whole. Yeah, the, 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 you're talking about their career just this fall? Uh, either one. Yeah, the the, win, the winning of 37 games, you, don't, you only have 10 on the schedule each year, and I'm, I'm repeating myself, but you only have 10 on the schedule this year to win 37 when, when you're only guaranteed 40. That, that's pretty good. That, that is a really, really good. And just the things that they did, you know, hadn't, hadn't beaten. Uh, here, here is – I am forever indebted to them. And, and, and our seniors find out over time, you know, you know how, how do you spell love, uh, T-I-M-E. Uh, you, you spell it over time. That's how you spell it. Um, they'll understand because I'll always be there for them two days from now, two months, 20 years from now. Uh, I'll be there for them and what they need and anything I can do, they'll always get it. Um, but, but they signed up four years ago, the four-year seniors. And then Draquan and, and 
Anthony, who'd been here five years because they had unfortunate things happen to them. Um, they signed up to play for a team that hadn't had a winning season in, in 10 years, 11 years. It had been a long, long time. So they, they were taping, taking a leap of faith, taping, taking a leap of faith with our coaching staff and with our university. And, and the hardest thing, Andy, the hardest thing isn't going. The, the hardest thing is not you win 10, you win 11, you win 10, three straight years. That, that's not the hardest thing. And there's, there's some obstacles there. But the hardest thing is this, going from one and nine to the 10 wins that that, that it, it, it it's just so much distance so much time in there so much work was put in um forever appreciative of them and i appreciate you letting me talk about them but i can't really put into words how indebted to them i am and how indebted to them our university should be and our athletic department should be because one more time they changed the way people think about Frostburg and about Frostburg State Athletics and about Frostburg football. And they did it through being resilient and, and, and grinding and working really, really hard. Um, need to ask one of those seniors how many times they worked out at 6 a.m. How many 6 a.m. workouts did they do? And they're, they're going to tell you it's in the hundreds. But, but they're up before the, rest, before the rest of America is up going to work. They're up in the weight room, and they're up running, and they're up practicing because we practice our two-a-days are at 6 a.m. Um, yeah, and – Great, great players. Great, great players. And, and maybe, and I'm, I'm going to end on this, okay, great players. And at the end of the day, those 13 young men may be better people than they are players. Well, we'll end on that. We'll talk Division Two all that next August. Uh, Delane Fitzgerald, thank you for another fantastic season here on the Bobcast. 10-1 uh, and one undefeated NJAC champions. I'll let you say go Bobcats. Yeah, hey, thank you all for everything. Go Bobcats. Next in the Bobcast, we have men's basketball with head coach Sean Brown. And on the men's side, three games away from Bobcat Arena last week, battled with Marietta in the first half before falling 84-59 and then traveled uh, to Carnegie Mellon for the CMU Invitational, took on CMU and Transylvania, falling in both of those games. So, Coach, we'll start with this. You know, three games in six days, all of them are on the road. What did you make of your team's effort and conditioning on this early season road trip? Well, I think, <clears throat> excuse me, our conditioning was pretty good. Our effort wasn't wasn't the best. We didn't get the get our best effort um, on this road trip, and um, you know, I, I I think mental toughness is um, was a big key. Played a big part of that. Um, you know, we're in the middle of we're in the middle of um, a culture change here um, at FSU for, uh, men's basketball, and you know. There are some things that we're enforcing that we're that, that we're going to hold, you know, our guys accountable for, um, you know, and and that's just kind of that's kind of what we're doing, and that's kind of how it is. Um, I didn't think we got the got our best effort. We want to we want guys out there um, going 110 percent, and if we're going to make mistakes, we want to make 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 those mistakes at 110 percent, and um, I'm, I don't think we're getting that. Well, what what did you learn about your team, and, and what did, you, did your team learn about itself, really, and, and what went well and what didn't go so well over the course of the whole week? Well, we talk about discipline a lot, and, um, you know, our team figured out that we aren't the most disciplined team, and we can't just win on athletic ability. Um, we, we played some really, really um, good teams. Um, Marietta undefeated. Um, they win – they either win their league or or win the their league's um, tournament every year. Sure. So they're you know they're a big time team in Ohio. Um, Carnegie Mellon's traditionally been really good. They're um, well oiled, oiled machine and um, you know they 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 played us strong and and they they're a good team. I mean they, their record doesn't doesn't reflect how good they are, but they're a really good team. And um, you know they they had a system in place for. A number of years and they you know they got it rolling have it rolling there and they know the, the way they want to play ball everybody's on the same page there very disciplined very disciplined um so you know we 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 have some work to do we got a lot of work ahead of us and and you know just being being a, a team for five weeks you know we're, we're not going to be there already um new coaching staff new players um you know we got a lot of work ahead of us 
you know, three three games last week, three different starting lineups. What, what's your process for putting together a starting lineup at this point in the season, and how much can change game to game in terms of you know the the rotation and, and the product that Frostburg puts on the floor in terms of its personnel? Well, we, we let me start by saying we don't want to keep switching up lineups. Uh-huh. Uh, but as I told you um, in the prior po- uh, Bobcast, we're trying to figure things out. Um, you know, we're trying to find the best combinations, the best guys that, you know, played well together. Uh, we're trying to figure out who who's trying to do the things that we're asking them to do. So, you know, we we, we meet every day as a coaching staff, and we're, you know, we're throwing those things around. We're figuring it out. Um, there's some some guys that, that we think could be and should be playing better. That's not. And we have young guys who's stepping up and uh, – you know who's one who's trying to earn some minutes. So you know we we we're just trying to figure out. There's, there's no perfect. Um, th- there is no no perfect um, scenario. Uh, we're just trying to figure it out. Uh, we're trying to get better every day as a team. But we want to find out who those individuals that that's trying to do exactly what we want them to do. And um, you know there's there's some things that we emphasize. And if they're not getting uh, getting done, then next man up. Any standouts uh, from the last week with your you're happy the way that they played um, that that you'd like to point out here? Daniel Alexander, he's been a, um he's been consi- pretty consistent from the uh, from day one. Now he had issues putting the ball in the hole, but um, but outside of that, Daniel's been pretty consistent. Uh, he's been a vocal leader. He's uh he's st- he stepped up and and you know willing to take tough shots. Um, he's a little more aggressive on offense. He's more aggressive on defense. Uh, Daniel has been really, really playing really, really well. And these last three games, I mean, he was he he stood out. Uh, he was all tournament team um, just this past weekend. I think this past game he had uh, like twenty six points. Twenty eight. Twenty eight high for him. Okay. Well, yeah, he's you know he's getting it done. Daniel's getting it done. Daniel Daniel is focused. Daniel's trying to do um, everything we asked him to do. And he's one of the kids who was really, really, really high on, you know, change. He, he was one that was a, one of the, a kid who was looking to embrace the, the, the new coaching staff and the new way of uh, doing things. Uh, so, you know, Daniel bought in. Daniel bought in. Obviously, he's a, a huge talent. He's, a, you know, a heck of a player, heck of an athlete. Uh, but Daniel's bought in. Um, seems like he's all all the way in. We're gonna um, probably appoint him um, as our second captain on Tuesday in front of the team. Um, we've only appointed uh, Ed Cole um, captain, and uh, you know we, we we wanted to see how things shape up. Who steps up and be you know who wanted to earn that captain uh, that C on there you know next to their name. So I think Daniel's earned that, and um, we'll award him that tomorrow. We're excited about that. It's it's impressive how he's been able to maintain his efficiency even at a higher volume in, in workload uh, so far this year. I want to shift to to the the defense for your team. You, you start, you know, our very first conversation. We start on the defensive end of the floor. Mm-hmm. You know, Frostburg played in three straight high scoring games where 80 plus was needed to win the game last week. Uh, some slow starts offensively for your team. Uh, how can how can strong defensive play kind of make up for those slow starts and, and and offensive struggles that you've seen early on? Oh man, our defense and and I've talked about this even through our first two wins. Our defense has been horrific. Um, it's 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 we're, our defensive rotation are <clears throat> excuse me aren't anywhere near where they need to be. Um, we're not on a string. Our guys aren't trusting each other. Um, and we can't stay in front of the we we can't guard the ball we can't stay in front of our of our men which is um, it's been kind of interesting to us as a coaching staff um, so again we want we're going to try to find those guys who who buying into those ideals and those principles um, and you know we we don't know we don't want the game in the, in the eighties and nineties but you know we gotta we kind of gotta play the way we you know we, we gotta do what we need to do to try to win ball games. Um, but no, that, that that's not how we want to play ball. We want to get stops. Uh, I think we're giving up an average of almost 80 points a game, if not 80 plus. Um, and that's that's not conducive to winning basketball games. 
over the last week, what's, what's the best stretch of basketball your team played in the three games? What, what can you point to and be proud of? Well, that was a, that was a seven and a half minute stretch. At the end of this last game, we played we we played Transylvania, um, another really good good um, sure team. Um, but we had the last seven minutes, seven and a half minutes of the game. Uh, I, I want to say we were down like twenty six points or something like that. And you know we kind of we went with five guys who we knew were going to be all over the floor and was going to hustle. And then we you know we had two guys who we, who we were subbing in, so we made the um the commitment to play full court man to man and be, guard the ball full court and trap and make the game ugly and you know we really really um we made it we made it a game we made it a game um we cut it to 10 and we had a three pointer um a three point opportunity wide open three point shot we that we missed we could have cut it to 7 um with about two and a half minutes to go maybe 3 minutes to go so that that was the best stretch of basketball that we've played uh, over this last three games, and I was proud of our guys for that. Uh, they finished strong, um, and, and and you know I think that's something to build on. Absolutely, that in, in the last of the three games that you played this past week, coming up for the men's team at Bridgewater on Saturday. So after three games and six days and, and the holiday in there, uh, you've got a whole week to practice and, and work on things. So what 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 is on the agenda for your team in terms of practice this week, and what are you looking for against Bridgewater? Well, first off, we're gonna um. A lot of a lot of film this week, a lot of film this week. We need to break break down um, our players, break down our players, our own players' tendencies, and and we need to show them exactly what what we're looking for and exactly what we need um, in our in, in our players offensively and defensively. So, film film studies and individual workouts will be huge this week. Um, as far as pr at practice, um, we're, we're we just, as a coaching staff, we just met maybe a half hour ago, and you know we're we're figuring out um, lineups. You know we've gotten a few guys back off injury, a um, few few more players into the fold now, so uh, we're getting closer to being a fully healthy healthy team, and uh, you know we're ready to we feel like we're ready to roll. Um, we're still missing uh, our anchor in the middle, mm -hmm. uh, but you know is we, we've got a pick up the pieces and, and we've got to grind we, we've got to we can still win games we have a lot of talent on this team um you know minus zach coleman but you know when big zach come back um he'll hopefully we'll get him into the mix but you know this week you know we again b the two big things are going to be films film study and individual workouts bridgewater what are you looking for bridgewater i'm looking for our guys to go out and, and, and play a complete 40 minutes um and we we play well in spurts, um, but I want us to compete for 40 minutes. Win or lose, I want to see us out there competing for 40 minutes. Again, we're we're five weeks into the five weeks into the season, maybe six. It's all this, all the concepts that we want our guys to to learn is is not going to come overnight, and we understand that. But we'll keep drilling and drilling and drilling. But um, we do expect um, a really good showing on Saturday. Well, we're, we're excited. Men's basketball, the season rolls on. Um, we're excited to have you back in Bobcat Arena here the, the following week. So, Sean Brown, thank you for joining me again this week on the Bobcast. Hey, thanks for having me again on the Bobcast. Next on the Bobcast, we have women's basketball with head coach Kerry Saunders. The Bobcats, winners over Chatham on a late three-pointer this past Tuesday evening, and then to Marietta and battled with Trine and Hiram over the weekend. So, women's basketball stands at four and two on the year and just like men's basketball three games in six 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 days all on the road uh how would you rate your team's energy and, and conditioning over this last week it was a tough tough six days because you throw in thanksgiving in there and everyone wanting to be home for the holidays and traveling back and um you know on tuesday night before thanksgiving um i thought we had a lot of great energy a lot of effort a lot of hustle um, and that resulted in a big win for us um, with that buzzer beater by, by Megan. Um, this weekend, it was a tough tournament for us. Um, battled the number nine team in the nation, battled through injury. Um, other people had to step up. 
Um, and I think it taught us a big lesson of next man up and you've got to be ready. And just because you haven't been getting big minutes, you quite possibly could get big minutes um, based upon, you know, situations that occur. Um, so I think this weekend was a big learning weekend for us. Um, and hopefully we can learn um, from our mistakes, from the things that we need to work on and, and move forward. And that's that's what I'm hoping, you know, to get out of this weekend. I want to touch on the Chatham game to, to start. Frostburg led by six of the half, trailed by three going into the fourth, and mm -hmm. won the game on a late three from Megan Kelly. What did you see in Chatham that you liked and, and didn't like? Well, I think um, the biggest part of that game was they defended us differently than anyone that we've seen so far. Um, and we had to figure out other ways to score because they were taking – they were taking, honestly, our shooters out of the game, and that's that's what we do. Um, so we started to get the ball inside out. Um, but the biggest thing is is you never stop playing. Um, you never, ever stop playing. So it, it came down to the wire, and, and we got a turnover off of them when they had the ball, and we went down, and, and we hit a three. Um, and, I you know, I found it ironic that Megan hit the three because she had been shut down all night, and, you know, one lapse of, of a defensive possession for them cost them the game. Um, but it was a really great team win um, for us to be able to pull back like that and get that huge win on the road right before the holiday. Victoria Yoder, uh, 23 points, easily a career high for her. Uh, was part of that the, the Chatham game plan of taking away the shooters, and are you looking for her and her role this season to, to carry more of a scoring load like we saw on Tuesday? Yeah, I think with, with Diggs and, and Megan getting kind of shut down in a way, um, we had to go to another option. Um, I think in that Chatham game, they couldn't handle her athleticism. Um, she could rise above um, in her quickness and her speed, and she just took what was available to her. And that, and if and if she does that, she can be a scorer. Um, and that's exactly what she did in that in that Chatham game. Um, and yeah, of course, everyone on the floor, I'm looking for them to be a scoring threat. Um, I, I need them to distribute the ball, score, you know, do everything that they can on the offensive side of the floor. Um, so yeah, I mean, it's in her, it's in her to do it. Um, she just has to stay true to herself, um, and take what's, what is in her game and that's her speed and athleticism. So, and that, that worked for her in that Chatham game. And, and I think it was a big confidence booster for her. Um, and, and we're hoping for, for big games out of her in the future. Big night for her. And along with the other Emery Diggs and Stotler all played 34 plus minutes, mm -hmm. uh, the rotation, a, a tight seven player group. Uh, what led to such a tight rotation, especially with no reserve forward seeing the floor? You know, I, I think part of it was their lineup versus our lineup. Um, it was a very quick game. Sure. It was up and down, up and down, up and down. And I felt like, you know, having that tight rotation, and they had a tight rotation as well. Um, and it just seemed to work for us to keep up with that pace. Um, I don't think, you know, going – too deep in our bench for that game was would have made it a success um and i think amanda and sydney were playing well and keeping up with their guard like players um on the defensive side of the floor so i think that may, most of my decisions come from matchups and how we can match up with them um, defensively um, because that's an important part of our game um, so that's one of the things that we look for first so that was basically that you know in a nutshell of just that's how it matched up, and that's kind of how it fell. We, we talked last year, especially for some of the forwards, about conditioning and, and how you were impressed really last year with how in shape Amanda Emery was coming into the season. Mm -hmm. She played 39 minutes as well in, on Sunday against Hiram. Mm -hmm. What can you say about the conditioning of, of your front court, Sh Stotler, Emery, uh, Yoder sometimes down there and being able to play big minutes? Yeah, I, honestly, Amanda and, and Sid can play a lot of minutes. Um, and they seem to, you know, there's phases in there where I'm like, oh, they're tired. But, you know, I pull them out for a minute and they're ready to go again. And on the bench, they're like, yep, I'm ready. Um, and that's a testament to how hard they've worked. And I think that's also a testament of them playing the minutes that they have in previous years. So those two came in and played freshman year and played big minutes freshman year. Um, so they're just kind of, I, I joke that they're just like a weld-oiled machine together. Like they just, they go, 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 go because they're just so familiar with each other. Um, and that's, you know, all of our starters. I, I ask them to play big minutes 
Um, and for the most part, we can keep up in our stamina and get breaks when we can. Um, so, yeah, overall, pleased, pleased with, with their performances from that standpoint. I want to go to the weekend. Trine is the number nine team in the country. Uh, an 86-35 win for Trine in that game. Uh, you know, Trine, you, you were telling me before this about just the size that that team has. What what are the challenges your team runs into when you run into a bigger team like that just across the board uh, against your lineup? Yeah, so Trine obviously was a team that um, was so polished. Um, they have, you know, everyone looked the same. Everyone played the same. They kind of interchanged positions, um, which was a challenge for us. You know, in the CAC, there's guards and there's forwards and not many interchange. You know, there's mm -hmm. a few tweeners that, that can bounce between the two. Um, but they were just – they were bigger than us. You know, that that was one of the biggest things um, for us. And, and they shot the ball extremely well, and we didn't shoot the ball well um, in the beginning of the game. Um, we had open looks in that first and second quarter, and those shots just weren't falling. Um, also, you know, defending them and defending their size was a challenge for us, and I think we were concerned about, you know, us getting beat and – being posted up and, and things like that instead of applying pressure, you know, to, to their longer, lengthier um, players. But, you know, overall, it's a number nine team in, in the country. And, and, you know, you work hard in those games. You never give up. Um, but, you know, it, it was a tough matchup for us. But let's move, shift over to Sunday. Hiram, 83-73 uh, win for Hiram. Frostburg, a 27-point first quarter and then was outscored 46-28 over the next two quarters. However, you lose Megan Kelly after just seven minutes, and in those seven minutes, she already had nine points. Mm -hmm. How did her loss really impact your team in that game? It's huge. Um, you know, everyone, you know, sees Megan as the scorer, but she is a really good defender, and she's a calming presence on the floor. Um, she kind of just keeps everything, you know, going, and, you know, with her energy this senior year that she's come out with, she's she looks to do everything, um, and us missing that completely in our lineup, like not having her for the rest of the game, really kind of made other people step up into roles that they hadn't stepped up in yet this year. Not that they're not capable of, and I'm really happy with the way that, that um, Kayla and Jasmine did step into those roles. But, you know, when you lose a player like that mid-game, not even mid-game, that was the first quarter, end of the first quarter, it, it confuses you as a team because you're still looking for that person and – and forced to play bigger minutes and things like that. Um, so it was just a – it was a rough game on Sunday. <laughs> yeah. Um, you know, I, I firmly believe that we should have come out on top, um, but circumstances didn't go our way. Um, uncontrollable things didn't go our way. Um, but, you know, again, like I said in the beginning, you've got to learn from these things. You've got to learn from these weekends. Um, you know, we are 4-0 going into it, and we just went 0-2. It, you know, we've got to – get back to working hard and doing the little things, and that's that's something that I think we didn't bring this weekend. I do want to point out for the Hiram game, Victoria Diggs, a season-high 24 points in that game. Did she have to get more aggressive with Kelly out, and uh, are you looking for more of that as the season goes forward? As Through the, the first six games, she has three games where she shot fewer than, than ten times, which was really surprising to see. Yeah, I mean, I think um, she was forced a little bit because Megan was that other scorer, not that Diggs and, and – or Jasmine and Kayla can't score, but it was – you know, they had gotten into a rhythm, meaning Megan and, and Diggs together um, within these first four games, and it was a beautiful rhythm, I think. Um, having those two threats out there, uh, you know, with, with those two. Um, and so, I, you know, I, I've always looked for Diggs to score, but I also – she shouldn't have to put all that pressure on her every single game, and that's what Meg has, has released, you know, from her from this year – versus last year. Um, Diggs is always going to score, and she's always going to want to score, which is also a, an awesome thing to have on the floor. Um, but the way that it ended up on on Sunday, with her having that many points, she did need to score um, because it was, you know, with Megan out, Megan's been our leading scorer this thus far, so we've, we've got to make up those points. So, you know, Diggs is a great player, and she's, she's a competitor. Um, and so I'm, I'm happy with her performance, and she was the all-tournament team for that tournament, um, a representative from our team. So I'm really happy with her performance. 
coming up this week. Only one game, Juniata on Wednesday at home, the Eagles, a tournament team last year. So one game uh, this week, what are you really focusing on for, for your team in terms of uh, working on this week? I think getting back to our principles, um, boxing out, defensive energy, playing as a team. Um, you know, I mentioned that I think during the Jim Crawley tournament, that first game, I didn't feel like we played as a team. And I feel like we got away from that again. Um, we are a really, really good team when we play together and we, when we have that heart and energy on the defensive side of the floor, and that's where it stems from. Um, you know, when we can get out and run and transition a little bit, we get a little bit more pep in our step and more energy. Um, so thank goodness we only have one game this week. <laughs> We've been grinding it out for, for two, two and a half weeks now. Um, so we need to get focused for Wednesday, um, get back to the things that we know how to do, um, it's a home game, finally. <laughs> mm -hmm. You know, we haven't been at home for a while, so we get to sleep in our own beds. You know, that's going to help. Um, but just get back, practice hard these next two days, um, and, and hopefully come out with this win on, on Wednesday and then have a much-needed little break before, before Monday. And we're excited for that. Wednesday night, Juniata here at Bobcat Arena. Coach Kerry Saunders, thank you for joining me this week on the Bobcast. Thank you.